Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to look at the cylindrical shell method to finding volume. Um, it's our last volume technique um, where we're, and it, it's similar to yesterday where we used um, the disc method and the washer method. One thing I want you to notice about the way we did discs and washers is that the rectangles that we drew, the dx or the dy, were always perpendicular to the axis of revolutions. So like if you look at my first one here from yesterday, here's the rectangle, but it's perpendicular to the axis we were revolving around. Same thing on the second one. Here's our rectangle. See how it's perpendicular to the axis? Here's our rectangle perpendicular to the axis. And that was still true even when we used dy instead of dx. So when we revolved around a vertical line, then we had to use horizontal rectangles, right? So still perpendicular, still perpendicular, still perpendicular. Today, we're going to talk about how to integrate and create volume when those rectangles are parallel with the axis of revolution. Now, with some functions, like the examples from yesterday and today, you can use either method interchangeably, um, but there will be some functions where it's much easier to do one or the other. Uh, first off, let me give you a quick visual here. So now this is not quite the function we're working with today, but it's an upside down parabola. And if you were integrating it, um, you know, there'd, there'd be a whole bunch of these little really thin rectangles, right? And, you know, the diagram can make them big or small. Obviously, when you're integrating, they get really, really thin. That's why the width is dx. And watch what happens as we revolve these dx rectangles around the y-axis, another vertical line. So we're going to take this, we're going to spin it around all the way. And basically what you end up with is a very, very thin cylinder. And that's why it's called the cylindrical shell method. If you had a bunch of these, and this is where the, this, this simulation falls short, if you had a whole bunch of these, then you could get the volume of this entire shape. One of the ways I like to think about this is to imagine like a roll of paper towels. A paper towel is very, very thin. It has infinitely thin um, width, right? I mean, you could take a, a caliper and measure exactly how thick a paper towel is. But when you wrap them around themselves over and over and over again, you still eventually end up with some volume. That's basically what the cylindrical shell method is doing. You take a whole bunch of circular layers, kind of like paper towels or, or sheets of wrapping paper or something, and you wrap them around one another and we get to volume. This one's a little bit harder to visualize, but if, if my paper towel thing isn't working for you, here's one more. Um, and of course, obviously you can Google search to your heart's content to try and find <laughs> different ways of visualizing it as well. But here's a function, here's our region, and if we were just to revolve that region around the y-axis, you know, we'd end up with some kind of almost cylindrical shape, obviously not quite, it would have that dip in the middle there. But let's, let's see how we would actually find that volume using cylindrical shells. What you do, again, just imagine your little dx um, rectangle that I have over here. So see on, on the left side we have this this little rectangle, and if you revolved it around the y-axis, you'd get this very thin tube, something like this. And if you had a whole bunch of these tubes inside each other and outside, following along with the function's line, hopefully hopefully this last one here kind of gives you an example of how that could form uh, a solid. So, let's get into actually evaluating. What do we need? We need some measure of the area that would be created by that cylinder. Hmm, that's kind of weird. Well, the, the surface area of a cylinder, well, imagine, okay, a cylinder here. If we were to, say, cut it along one line, along, at any point, we cut it, and then we were to flatten it out, Maybe I should, okay, I'm cutting it with the red line here. Snip, and then I'm flattening it out. We would have just a rectangle on the page. That sounds kind of weird, right? 
It's almost holiday time. I'm sure some of us are wrapping gifts. Just think about when you go get that roll of paper, wrapping paper, you roll it out, you cut it off, you went from having something that was circular to something that's a rectangle. The length of that rectangle is what would have been the circumference around the circle. Circumference. And then we'd still have height here. Well, let's see. The formula for circumference is uh, pi times diameter, or 2 pi times the radius. So that is why you'll see the formula then for the volume. It's just the integral of the area, 2 pi radius height. There's your length, 2 pi r, and then your height, height. <laughs> and for any rectangle, length times height gives you the full volume. Or sorry, gives you the full area. And then we integrate area to get volume. So if a equals 2 pi r h, then volume equals the integral of that. So that's what we're going to work with here. We have to just identify what's r, what's h, and they both have to be in terms of whatever variable we want to integrate with. Um, let's see. I honestly should have printed three diagrams for this page, just like I did last time. So it might be worth your while real quick to uh, sketch a couple more here. Um, so we'll do, we'll do part A over here, we'll do part B over here, we'll do part C over here. There we go. Okay, for part A, we're going to revolve around x equals 2. Conveniently, that is this line that's at the edge of the boundary. Um, like I said, today we're going to use the cylindrical shell method. Could you use the disk or washer method um, from, from the other day. Yes, you could. Like I said, they're interchangeable on some problems. This is a problem where you could do it either way. I want to show you how to use the shells here. So, let's see. Now remember, with shells, your rectangle, your dy or your dx, has to be parallel with the axis of revolution. So I'm going to use an infinitely thin rectangle. I'm going to use dx for my differential. This is another reason why I like to draw it out. This will help me figure out the radius and figure out the height. The radius, remember, this rectangle is going to get spun around this axis of revolution. So the radius is going to be the distance from the axis of revolution to my differential rectangle. And then the height is going to be the other dimension. Here it actually is up and down. It does not have to be up and down, as you'll see on the next page. But it's, it's, it's going to be um, the other measure of the rectangle here. So for part A, let's see. Our volume would be the integral from, since we're using dx, we can use x values. So we'll go from 1 to 2, or sorry, from 0 to 2, of 2 pi times, I need some measure of this radius. Well, let's see. Our differential rectangle, it would always have a, an x-coordinate of x-something, right? And then, you know, like wherever you're putting this point, it'd be x comma y. We're most interested in its distance to this vertical line, so we're really just curious about this x value. This vertical line we said was at x equals 2, so I think this distance here, this radius, is going to be 2, because that would be this distance out here, minus this distance here, which would just be x. So I think the radius, the thing we actually wanted, is just going to be 2 minus x. And that, again, is going to be this length right here. Then for our height, well, the height is the, it's going to be the function's height, right? But you can't put in, um, you know, y, because <laughs> then you have two variables. So instead, it's going to be, let's see, it's still quadratic, so it's just going to be x squared. So there's our height. And then close it with the differential. Um, so here's our radius. Here's our height. The 2 pi can be on the inside or the outside. Does not matter. And again, at this point, you could punch in your calculator or something to evaluate. Again, today we're just working on setting them up. 
For the next one, we're going to revolve about a line that's farther away. So it's not going to be up against the region this time. So here's our line, x equals 5. We still have the same function otherwise, though. It's, it's defined by y equals x squared. I'm going to put my rectangle, my dx, on there somewhere. And again, we need to come up with a radius and a height. The radius is always the distance to the axis of revolution. So this is going to be my radius. And then my height, again, is just the height of my rectangle. It's basically dependent on the function here. So let's see. I'm going to bring the 2 pi out front this time. The limits of integration, remember, are dependent on just the region. So no matter what here, I'm going to do from 0 to 2 for my limits of integration, because that's, that's all the region that we got. And then let's see for my radius. Well, last time, if it was 2 minus the x value of the rectangle here, I think since our axis of revolution is 5, I think our radius then would have to be 5 minus the x value at whichever rectangle you have. Again, that's because this distance is 5, and then this distance would be whatever the x value is. So that's our radius. And then for our height, once again, just like last time, that'd be the height of this rectangle, so that'd, that'd just be the function. Whoops, I went wrong color there. Again, that would be our h. Let's see, for the last one, we're going to rotate about the y-axis. So for part C, we'll have to change it up a little bit. We'll put the axis of revolution somewhere else. Again, my differential has to be parallel to use this method, so I'm still drawing vertical rectangles. The radius is the distance from the axis of revolution to your rectangle, so there's my radius. And then our height is the height of the rectangle. Hey, this time, it's easier. This length from the y-axis to the rectangle, that'd just be x. And then our height would be the, the function itself, again, as always. So 2 pi, same integral of the bounded area, 0 to 2. Now our radius is x, and then our height is x squared. So this integral would definitely be very easy to evaluate by hand, wouldn't it? Let's turn the page. Now let's revolve with respect to uh, um, horizontal axes of revolution. So um, same thing here. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to jot down our formula. We said volume is integral from A to B of uh, 2 pi radius height. And then with respect to whatever your variable is in question. So on here, on this page, it's going to be dy because you'll notice all the lines are are now um, uh, horizontal, so we're going to use dy instead. Just like uh, the other page, let's let's give ourselves a couple more diagrams. I meant to do that for you and forgot because I'm a, an amazing teacher. Uh, so here we go. Okay, first up, we're going to rotate about the x-axis. The x-axis will be down here. It is touching the region, um, so hopefully that makes things a little nice for us. Let's draw on our rectangle somewhere. Remember, for the shell method, the rectangle has to be parallel to your axis of revolution. Since this would give it some real width, it would be infinitely short, so the differential is going to have to be y. And since we're spinning around this away, that would make this length our radius. And the, the height of the rectangle, I guess the, the, the height now would kind of be the width of the rectangle. And sometimes that bothers people. And so my suggestion to you is if you can just remember that the radius is always the distance from the axis of revolution to your rectangle, then the height is the other. In fact, maybe we jot that down in the summary somewhere. So uh, r is always distance from axis of revolution. I don't know why I capitalized those. That makes it sound like something you learned about in a world history class. The axis of revolution took over the world in World War IV anyway. Um, 
R is always the distance from the axis of revolution to uh, the rectangle you draw, to the differential rectangle. And then the height is the other. H is other <laughs> dimension, other length of a rectangle. Because I, I know it's weird to call it a height when it's not up and down. So hopefully, um, hopefully that works for you. So A. Since we're using dy, our limits of integration need to be y values. So now we're going from 0 up to 4. From 0 to 4. Again, and then I just need my radius times my height. So our radius um, is the distance with this green arrow. And, well, that would just be the y value at that particular point, wherever you drew the rectangle. So to generalize it, I think it would just be y. The height, or the width here, now this is going to get complicated. This is where we really have to stop and think. Earlier, we called this, this height, we called it, um, we said it was this length, which is uh, 2 minus this length, which we said was x. So earlier we said it was 2 minus x. Well, this is problematic because we're trying to use the y differential. We're trying to use dy. Right now, I have a variable mismatch. So let's fix that. Remember, our function here was y equals x squared. y equals x squared. So I need to get rid of this x in my definition of the height. So let's, let's rewrite this. Let's make this x equals the square root of y. On this side, it would be the positive square root. If, if we were to continue the graph over, it, the other side would be the negative square root. But this side is the positive square root. So to fix our integral, let's trade out this x for the square root of y. Now we have all the same variable. This is something we could punch into a calculator and make it do for us. Actually, we could also do this ourselves if we really wanted to. But who wants to? Let's see. For our next one, we are revolving about the horizontal line y equals 4, which would be up here at the top. And it actually it would be touching right here. I just made a mistake in my drawing. Again, if we're using the shell method, my rectangles need to be parallel to the axis of revolution. So now let's just think. Remember, the radius is always the distance from the axis to the rectangle. So this here would be my radius, and the other dimension of the rectangle is going to be the height. So here's my height. Great news. It looks like our measure of the height didn't change. So our height's still going to be 2 minus the square root of y. The high, or the radius, I'm sorry, is going to be just a little bit different. Let's see. So all of this length is 4. And then the height of the rectangle, well, that would be given by its y value. So I think we could claim the radius here would be 4 minus the y value of the rectangle. And that will work no matter where you draw the rectangle. And then we'll close it with dy. Let's see. For the last one, oh, I forgot the limits. Sorry, 0 to 4. My bad, my bad. For the last one, we're going around y equals negative 2. So that one would be below. Again, let's draw your rectangle somewhere. Here it is. Again, it's a dy. So our radius is the distance from the axis to the, to the, um, the uh, differential rectangle. And then our height is the other dimension. Height, once again, height not changed here. It's just, okay, right minus left, but we had to figure out a way to get it into y, y variable. And for our height, well, let's see. I know, I'm running out of colors here. I know this height is the y value, right? And then I need to add on this extra distance over here. 
Well, you're going down to, but if, if we're just straight up talking distance, it's two units of extra distance there. Is that fair? So I think our height would be, I'm sorry, our radius would be 2 plus y. And that will get you this full length for r. Close your integral with dy. Um, <clears throat> yeah, there you go. Okay, uh, to help you kind of collect all of these, the last page just has a uh, you know, little table for you. I'll go ahead and fill that out if you like. You could go ahead and, I would say, take a second and think about it. See if you can um, fill it out yourself. Um, just that'd be a good test to see how much of this you know you remember already. And then I'll jump in with the finished page in a second here. Okay, so here's what I said. Uh, for my volume formulas, remember disk and washer, they were both using the circle idea of pi r squared. The disk is actually a full circle. The washer is the one where you have an opening in the middle, so you have to get rid of an inner circle, which is why it's the outer radius squared minus the inner radius squared. Again, make sure, I know I said this last video, I, I can't stress this enough, keep the squares on these individually. Do not try and factor it out outside the quantity. You cannot factor out exponents when there's addition or subtraction like that. In the case of both of these methods, our cross sections, our rectangles, were perpendicular to the axis of revolution. So for disks and washers, if we were revolving around a horizontal line, then in our region, we had to have uh, vertical rectangles to spin them around. For shells, it was the other way. If we were revolving around a horizontal line, we needed to have horizontal um, um, cross sections or hor horizontal rectangles. And that's because they need to be parallel to the axis of revolution. And the shell one it might be a little harder to think of, but it, it comes from a cylinder's area, which would be circumference times height. And that's why it's 2 pi r h. You'll notice I kind of left a, the blanks in here, like d blank, d blank, d. That's because it could be with respect to x or y. You know, it just depends on what you're doing here. So that's what I have next. If cross sections are horizontal, that would look like this. You have to integrate with respect to y. If you have vertical ones, that's what we start out doing for the first like, you know, two chapters of integral calculus. That would be with respect to x. The last thing is back in section A, which I know is a while ago now, we integrated and found volume with cross-sectional area. The general strategy there was come up with some representation of the area, some formula of the area, and then just integrate that, and that'll get you to volume. Um, and that is what I had for you. Thanks, guys.